Hey, it's Nikachu, and today we are going to take a look at all the two card combos every Magic player should know. Because after your friends are completely sick of you playing with your combos, you can just move to the next one. Let's start us off with Azami Lady of the Scrolls, which says tap and untap wizard you control and draw a card. The plan is we are going to tap the Azami. Then with mind over matter, choose and discard a card, tap or untap target artifact, creature or land. Excellent! What we're going to do with the card that we drew with the Azami is untap the Azami. Tap the Azami, discard a card, untap the Azami. We're gonna draw a card off the Azami, discard a card, untap the Azami, tap, untap the Azami. We're gonna tap that Azami all night long. And we're gonna draw through our entire deck to find exactly what you want. This next combo is a Storm Player's Dream. We've got Wither Bloom Apprentice, a green and a black. Magecraft, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. How are we gonna chain this over and over again? We're gonna use the Chain of Smog. Target player discards two cards from his or her hand. That player may copy the spell and may choose new targets for that copy. Oh, guess who we're going to target as the player? Yourself! So you target yourself to discard two cards from your hand, then you have the option to copy that spell and do it all over again. What happens when you copy and do it all over again? Your opponent's going to lose one life and you're going to gain one life. Keep chain smogging over and over again. For once, being a chain smoker actually pays off. Next, we've got Sliver Queen. For two generic, you can put a 1-1 one, one colorless Sliver Creature token onto the battlefield. How are we going to go big with this? We're going to use the Mana Echoes. Two red, two generic. An enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may add an amount of colorless equal to the number of creatures you control that share a creature type with it. This thing gets exponentially out of control because we've already got a Sliver Queen on the battlefield. Then you put one Sliver on the battlefield, boom, you get two colorless mana. With that two colorless mana, you spend it to get another Sliver. Then you get three mana. Spend two mana, get another Sliver. You get four mana, spend the four mana, get two more Slivers, get six. This goes off the charts. This is more powerful than compound interest. By the time it's over, you're gonna have more Slivers crawling all over the battlefield. Your battlefield's gonna be disguised because just like the Sliver Queen, it's gonna look like a bunch of centipedes all over the place. For this next combo, if you haven't heard of it, you must have been living under a rock, born in a cave. This is the infamous two card combo, the two card combo Splinter Twin. How does it work? The idea is you play either Pestermite or Deceiver x -Arc. When it enters the battlefield, you may untap target permanent you control or tap target permanent an opponent controls. But the idea is you can untap your own stuff. So you are going to enchant either the Deceiver x -Arc or the Pestermite, which both have the ability to untap your permanents with the Splinter Twin. So you tap the Pestermite to put a new Pestermite onto the battlefield. That Pestermite gonna untap the old Pestermite. And then you can tap the Pestermite again with the Splinter Twin and you make another Pestermite. Untap your old Pestermite, go infinite. You have infinite Pestermites, infinite possibilities, infinite damage. Now the big brother to the Splinter Twin combo is of course Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker Haste. You can tap it, create a token that's a copy of target non-legendary creature you control. That token gains haste, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Now you could copy the Pestermite and Deceiver Exarch, but it can also copy things like Restoration Angel. So you copy your Restoration Angel and when it enters the battlefield, exile target non-angel creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. You're going to exile the Kiki Jiki. Kiki Jiki comes back fresh and new. Copy the Restoration Angel. Get a new Restoration Angel. Exile and get your Kiki Jiki back. And then you repeat this process until you have a million restoration angels on the battlefield and attack for the win. Now, if you're looking for the little baby Splinter Twin, we can do that for you. We can do it on a budget. This isn't going to cost any money at all. We got the Midnight Guard for a white and two generic, two, three creature. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, untap the Midnight Guard. How are we going to do this for pennies? We got the Presence of Gond, a green and two generic Aura, enchanted creature has enchanted creature has tap. Create a 1-1 green elf warrior creature token. So you enchant 
the Midnight Guard. You're gonna tap it, it's gonna get a creature onto the battlefield, you get to untap your Midnight Guard. Tap the Midnight Guard, boom! Another creature, untap, rinse and repeat this process, and what you got yourself is an elf army. Santa's little elves are going to work. This next combo is for all the sick mill players out there. We've got Dusk Mantle Guild Mage that has an activated ability whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere this turn, that player loses one life. And that's gonna combo perfectly with Mind Crank. For two generic mana, we've got an artifact. Whenever an opponent loses life, that player puts that many cards from the top of their library into their graveyard. So they put cards into their graveyard. That feeds back into the Dusk Mantle Guild Mage because whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, they're gonna lose a life. But if they lose the life, they gotta put cards back into their graveyard. And if they lose, put the cards in the graveyard, they're gonna lose life. And it feeds back over and over again, draining them from all their life to zero and all their cards go directly into their graveyard. It's gonna be a race. What's gonna run out first? First, your life total or your library? So here's a really cheesy way to win the game. We've got Niv-Mizzet the Perun, and frankly, this is one of the big daddy creatures in all of magic. Spell can't be countered, but here's the deal. Whenever you draw a card, Niv-Mizzet Perun deals one damage to any target. We're going to combo off with a pretty pathetic card called Curiosity for a single blue enchanted creature. Whenever enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. What ends up happening is you deal damage with Niv-Mizzet because you're going to draw a card every single turn, right? Then you deal damage to your opponent. When you deal damage to the opponent, you're going to draw a card. Whenever you draw a card, you deal damage to the opponent. This keeps going on until you've killed off everyone around your table. Niv-Mizzet deals so much damage that Flex Seal doesn't cover it under their warranty. Do you like mana? Do you want infinite mana? Well, I've got it for you. We got Devoted Druid. So many combos based around this creature. Uh, very humble. Tap, add one green mana, but you can put a minus one, minus one counter on Devoted Druid, untap the Devoted Druid. But if you keep doing that, Devoted Druid just gonna die. You put a minus one, minus one counter on it, then you put another one on it, and it's toast. It goes to the graveyard. Not until you have Vizier of Remedies onto the battlefield. If one or more minus one, minus one counters would be put on a creature you control, that many minus one, minus one counters, minus one are put on it instead. Okay, for the most long story short, you, you, no counters are put on this damn thing. You can tap it for green mana, untap it as many times as you want, make infinite mana, do whatever you want with it. Kids these days will never know the pain of mana burn. Here's something for the vampire fam. We've got exquisite blood. Whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. And then we combo with sanguine bond. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Whenever the opponent loses or if you gain any amount of life, it's all over because the moment your opponent loses life, you gain life, you gain life, they lose life. And this is a feedback loop until you have drained them of all their blood. Don't get drunk on O negative, kids. Okay, here is an infinite mana combo, but you can make infinite colored mana. You can get white, red, blue, black, or green. We got Grand Architect here. And it's got a special ability. Both target artifact creature becomes blue until end of turn, or you can also tap and untap blue creature you control, uh, add two colorless mana. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activated abilities of artifacts. Now the creature we're gonna combo off with is the Pilla Pala that has flying, and you can pay two generic mana and untap it, that's a very special ability. We're not tapping this thing now, we're untapping it, uh, and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Now, if you're getting lost on the calculation, this is what we're going to do. We are going to use the Grand Architect and pay a blue, target artifact creature becomes blue until end of turn. That creature, the Pillapala. And what we're going to do is tap the Pillapala with Grand Architect's ability to create the two colorless mana. And then with that two colorless mana, we're gonna untap the Pillapala. And then what we do is we end up with a whole color mana, let's say green. And then we could repeat this process, tap the Pillapala with a Grand Architect. And then we untap it and we can add a white and then a black, a blue, anything that we want. Pillapala is there for us. So many colors, just like Skittles, I can taste the rainbow. Are you tired of infinite mana combos? 
No? Good, because I've got more of them. We got Basalt Monolith for three mana. You can tap it at three colorless mana, but then you can also untap it for three generic mana. Tap it for three, untap it for three, tap it for three, untap it for three. This doesn't go anywhere, but not until we got Zerda, the Dawn Waker. Abilities you activate that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate this effect can't reduce the amount of mana in that cost to less than one mana so the the deal is you're going to tap this thing for three but then you can untap it for one you've netted two mana and you can go infinite use infinite mana for infinite possibilities so which of these combos were your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. If you know any other combos that go big that I did not mention, also let me know in the comment section below. Smash like for broken combos. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel or you're getting two card comboed by turn two.